Hey there. Today we're going to get tasks from Microsoft Planner into Power BI. You may have noticed that there's no Planner connector for Power BI yet, so we're going to have to get this data using Power Automate. And as far as Power Automate flows go, this is a really simple one. So if you've not used it before, um, don't worry. It's it's only got two steps to it. So And once we get the data, we're going to send it to a place where we can schedule a refresh on it with Power BI. So I'm going to use SharePoint as the storage location for this because it makes it really easy and it doesn't require a premium license, but you can send the data wherever you want to. So we're going to start out at make.powerautomate.com. So you can get there through the app launcher or just going to the URL, and then we're going to create a new flow. And we're going to make this a scheduled cloud flow because we want it to run on a periodic basis. So you could have this run once a day. We're going to call this. All right, and click Create. So for our first step, we're going to click on New Step here, and we're going to search for List Tasks. And there's two of these, there's list my tasks and list tasks. You want this one because you want things that are not just the ones that are assigned to you. So select that and then choose your group and choose your plan. And then we're gonna add one more action and that is create file. I'm gonna create the file in SharePoint. Uh, you could also use the create file for OneDrive. Just keep in mind that your OneDrive is attached to your user account. So it's not the best choice for business continuity's sake. All right, so let's choose our site. I've got one for Power BI in here somewhere. I'm gonna choose this one. Make sure it's a site that you have at least contribute access to obviously. In the folder path, you can click on this little folder icon and manually select your path. So your primary document library in a SharePoint site is going to be called shared documents. So check in there and then choose your folder. Mine is called data. Give this a name. So I'm going to call it demo planner tasks dot json this dot json is important we're creating a json file here primarily because this list tasks action provides a json response so creating a json file out of it is ridiculously simple all we do is drop in here the body of the response and strangely i don't know why this is but you don't see the body over here but if you search in the dynamic content for the word body, it pops up. I don't know why it behaves this way, but... And one more very important step here. What we need to do is go to the ellipses menu, go to settings, and go down to allow chunking. <laughs> so turn allow chunking off. What that does is it makes it so that when you run this, and the file already exists, it will replace and overwrite the file instead of failing. And that's what you want because you want the data to update when it runs. So I'm gonna save this and test it. And test is gonna create that initial file for us. So I'm gonna choose manually here and click test and run. And done. All right. Let's go look for our file. So there it is. So what I'm going to do now is actually navigate to the document library because the menu option I'm going to use here doesn't appear in the web part for the library. So I'm going to click on documents on the left hand side and that'll get us to the actual library view. And then we're going to go back into the folder. So I'm going to click this ellipses menu here and then go to details and then go to more details. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit. So there's a more details link in the very far bottom right corner. So click on that and that'll give us the path here. So this is the path we want to use because if you just click on this file and open it, you get a preview URL and this one won't work. So we needed to copy the path from that get details. And we are going to now download this file. And I know that seems backwards, but just trust me, we're gonna download it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up Power BI, and then we're gonna to go to Get Data and choose JSON because our file type is JSON and select the one that we downloaded. 
And now we are going to change the path that it is looking for this JSON file from our computer to SharePoint. And the reason we do it this way is because there's no single file connector for SharePoint Online. There's connecting to a folder, which comes with a whole bunch of baggage attached to it um, for combining files, which we don't want. And there's SharePoint Online list, which won't work for this. So what we're doing is we're using the local file connector and then just changing the path here. So if I go to the source step, click on the gear icon and then paste in that path that we copied a few minutes ago from SharePoint and click OK. And you'll see it's updated the line up here to look for the file in that path. So that's good. If you haven't logged in, it'll probably ask you at this point to authenticate. I've already authenticated, so it's not asking me, but you need to select the organizational account type and enter your Microsoft 365 credentials in the window that pops up if you are asked to do that. These expansion steps were all created by the JSON connector for us. However, I've noticed that occasionally sometimes it doesn't expand all of the values. So if you're missing your start and end date fields, for instance, just go to this step here and make sure all the boxes are checked for the things that you want selected. So we're going to go to this last step here and kind of go through what this data looks like. The bucket ID is the vertical column in Planner that you can drag to rearrange your tasks into. It doesn't have the bucket name. You can get that from the API. I'm planning on doing a second part to this video that shows how to get that information along with the assignee names because the assignee names are also not in here. It's only got the assignee IDs. But the process for getting those things is a little bit more convoluted than I expected. So I'm going to split that into a separate video. Okay, did I get everything? Looks like I'm missing the percent completed. I'm going to get that. And I'm going to change these to date instead of date time. At this point, you could add a custom column to flag things that are late. I'm going to do that real quick. I'll put the code into the video description in case anybody wants that. This is just an if statement. What it's doing is it's saying that if there's no due date, then it's not late. If the due date is before today's date, meaning it's after the due date today and it's not complete, then it's late. And if the completed date is greater than the due date, then it was completed late. So we'll add that. And then I'm going to make this into a Boolean type. So true, false. And I like to rename these custom steps so that I know what I was doing. All right. So at this point, we are ready to visualize this information. The typical way to do this is with a Gantt chart, but you could use a table too if you want to. I've got two videos on how to do two different kinds of Gantt charts that are both use free visuals. So I'm going to link those in the video description. And I'm just going to spend two minutes running through the scheduling of the refresh on this in case anybody hasn't done that before. So I'm going to close and apply this, save it and publish it to a workspace. All right, so for our data set, I'm going to go to the schedule refresh button and we're not going to use the gateway today. We're going to go straight to this data source credentials step, which will say failed to test with your data source. Please retry your credentials. That's because we haven't entered our credentials. So it is trying to authenticate anonymously, which won't work. So we need to click on edit credentials here and change the authentication method to OAuth2 and set our privacy level and sign in. All right, and then under refresh, just turn that on and apply and our refresh is scheduled. All right, that's everything I have for you today. That was how to get your planner data into Power BI using Power Automate. Thank you for watching.